today's the feast of St. John Lateran. It's a basilica, and do you know where it is? Right, right. I was hoping someone would say Rome. It's one of the four major basilicas in Rome that when you go to Rome, you go to see them. But it was really even that. It was really the first church in the world. And that's where the Pope always celebrated Mass, was at St. John Lateran before St. Peter's was built. It was first started in the year 311. And then over the years, it was added on, and then it burned down at certain points. But that's where the Pope said Mass for years, so it was always called the Pope's Church. There's two interesting things beside the beauty of that church, my friends, and that is they have these huge statues of the apostles there, and they're probably 25 feet high. And when people go in to when people go in for tours and things like that, they always have their picture taken next to the apostles, the one that they can relate to most, and the one that is most popular. And it was interesting because I sat there and watched this. You know who was the most popular one of all? No, no, Judas wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, Judas, was, he wasn't listed at that. I think St. Paul replaced him. But it was St. Thomas. St. Thomas, and probably the one we could uh, most relate to or St. Peter, we're always shooting off our mouths, aren't we, my friends? But both of those. If you go there, there's also a fragment of the table in which Jesus celebrated the Last Supper. So I'm not sure where that is in the Basilica itself, but you know, there's a fragment of, of the table of the Last Supper. And today's gospel, my friends, talks about the church. And it's really the only time that we see an angry Jesus, isn't it? It's really the only time. And he went into the temple and he really lost it. And he said, we're treating this temple like a marketplace. Laura Jones, she wrote a book called Jesus, the CEO. And in it, she talks about a well-known seminar leader and business inspirational Inspi he tries to inspire people in the business world. His name is Tom Peters. You guys are women that are involved with business. Sometimes you might have heard of him. He's not as popular as today as he was a few years ago. But when he would try to get his idea across, he would shout, wave his arms, stomp his feet, curse, turn blue in the face. And people used to refer to him when he was speaking. He was like a wild man. But those who knew him knew what he was doing. He was so passionate about business. And his whole heart and mind was committed to the sealed ideal. And he couldn't help but show emotion. And, and this, Laura Jones said, Jesus did the same thing. He came in and they were doing all sorts of stuff in the market, treating his temple like a marketplace. And he just lost it. He just lost it. Sometimes we forget, don't we, my friends, that this is a sacred building. Sometimes we forget that there's someone of great importance who lives here, don't we? Sometimes we forget of what we receive here and what it does for our lives, don't we? And that's why the church has this feast day lest we forget, lest we forget what this building is all about. Often people say to me, you know, Father, I don't go to church because all these hypocrites that go to church. And you know what? They're probably right. They're probably right. We've all been a hypocrite at one, so at one point in our lives, aren't we? At some point, every, you and I, we're gonna be, we'll be considered a hypocrite with our actions don't reflect what we say we believe. It's interesting, a priest had some surgery from, back, from his back and he was supposed to go out from his walk every day. And so he would walk in his neighborhood that was close to him and every day he would pass by a house at the same time where this little girl was practicing the piano. And it was a piece by Beethoven. And he said she, and he loved classical music. He said she was really murdering it. He said, you could barely understand this piece that she was playing. He said it was even hurtful to her ears. But you know, 
as he did this for, for eight straight weeks. And he said, you know, just because this girl, and he said, gave a pitiful rendition of Beethoven, did it reduce Beethoven at all? No, not at all. Just because she can't play the piece, it doesn't have anything to do with Beethoven. He's still a classic musician. And he said, you know, it's the same with church, you know? Just because some of us don't follow up the way we should, that shouldn't prevent us from going to church. That doesn't change anything, my friends. Just because he who sits next to me doesn't give a good example, who cares? We're not coming to church for that person or this person, right? But he said, you know, it was interesting because out of the eight weeks that he was walking by this house, he noticed something. And you know what he noticed? Yeah, each day she started to improve. At the end of it, it wasn't up to Beethoven, but it was a whole lot better than when he started. And that's what church does, my friends, doesn't it? We start here, we're faithful, and over time, we see a change take place. And that's what happens in church, right? As long as we're not worried about he or she who sits next to us, we need to worry about ourselves, right? We come to church for ourselves. Help us grow. Help us grow what we can receive here and what we can do out there. So this week, my friends, what we do in this building is so, so very important. And someone important lives here. And we need to receive him each week. God bless you.